So we have something called as AWS organizations. So what does AWS organizations basically help you to do? So AWS organizations is an account management service that enables you to consolidate multiple AWS accounts into one organization that you create and centrally manage. Now it really becomes difficult that you have just one AWS account for a big MNC where you have several departments and you want to bifurcate everything, right? So you want to have some services to be used by finance department, some services to be used by some other department and let's say if i'm trying to launch ec2 instance in the mumbai region as a part of finance department someone else is launching something else and if i have a company which has got several number of departments and if everyone is trying to use the same region it becomes very jazzy to see through what are all my ec2 instances what are all my resources which i have spinned up and how it goes through so aws organizations is the better way to work with so we basically go ahead and create multiple aws accounts and we actually go and we actually go ahead and consolidate into the one so how do we make consolidation so there's something called as aws organization with the help of which we'll be able to do it now the moment you go on to the home screen you will be able to see a button called as create an organization so you can just click on the start now here so there we go it does ask me to go ahead and create an organization, right? So if I go ahead and click on create organization, it asks you, would you like to enable all the features or it's only the consolidated billing that you would like to get through? It means if I enable all the features, it is basically hierarchy, hierarchy of the specific nature like Let's say I will show you on this diagram. Yeah, so let's say in this case, this is a main root account, which will be having subunits, right? So let's say this is one of my subunit and this is another subunit. And this subunit has got created one of the AWS account and this subunit has got a couple of AWS accounts. Now, this as a subunit would like to have whatever resources are there in both the AWS accounts. So in that case, I would opt to go for enable all features so that I'll have a policy. If you see here, I'll have a policy enabled, which is going to help me to access the resources as well. What are happening in this happening in this AWS account to check through. But if I am at a root account, which is just managing the billing of this complete AWS accounts, it doesn't bother what AWS resources are being spinned up, but we are just managing the billing of all the AWS accounts at one place. So there are two ways of getting created with the account. So we are going to create the first one that is on the higher side. That is going to just manage the billing part. Single payer and the centralized track, uh, tracking of the cost and the detailed cost management reports. And then you can get started with this. So there we go. So account has been added up here, which is a part of the main AWS account. And now I can go ahead and add few more AWS accounts if I have any. So I do not have other AWS account at this point. So all I have to do is click on add the AWS account and then it asks you whether you would like to create a new AWS account at this point or would you like to invite any of the existing AWS account. So the moment you're going to send an existing, uh, invite an existing AWS account, he is going to get an email where they have to confirm saying that yes, I would be like to be a part of this organization and it will start appearing here in this specific page where it says what is the name of the account with whose email ID it is being registered and what is the account ID. So basically with the account ID itself, we are going to send the invitation. So everything starts appearing in this case and it says when it was joined, right? The moment they confirm it, the status will come here as joined and so and so date. So the mo this once it is being done across, I'll be able to go down to my billing reports or something. So I'll have to open up that. Yeah, so I can just go down to billing section of my AWS and then automatically all the billings of the AWS accounts that are put across in this organization will start appearing into one, right? So it actually gives me certain advantages that we are going to learn in few seconds. So this is about how we set out the organization, right? So you can actually go ahead and click on create organization and then it asks you two ways, whether you would like to enable the full access or just for the billing purpose. So if you say full access, anyway, this account will be any will be able to track through 
the billing but also they will also have the access to the resources that are spent up in this specific aws account because there is some policy document that we are going to put across which is going to give me cross account access that we call it as and if you say with only billing then this root account is something like what we have just created which has only access to the billing section and it will be able to fetch whatever bill is being generated in this aws account Now, what is the major advantage when we use this consolidated billing or the organizations? So it, it becomes easier that all the accounts come into one place. Now, this is one example. Like I have, we have just created one AWS account, which we converted into paying account. And then I'm going to, let's say, make in join for all the three other AWS accounts of my company. Like I have one for test and development, one for production and third for back office. And let's say the monthly bill for this is coming around at $10,356 because test and development is trying to use around 1456 production is trying to use it 2400 back office is trying to use it 6500 so directly it appears in the paying account saying that the total bill is around 10356 but if i'm going to individual account i'll be able to see the bill of 14562400 and 6500 so this becomes an easier method that i need to make only payment from one i do not need to have all the departments paying it from their own pocket so paying account is independent and cannot access the resources of the other accounts so as we just saw it will have a access only to the resources that are getting spent up and retrieve their billing so it cannot access that those resources but it can just retrieve the billing information and all the link accounts are independent with each other so back office account cannot access the production neither the production can access any of these test or back office accounts as well and currently there's a limit of 20 linked accounts for the consolidated billing. So if you want to consolidate at this point of time, you can consolidate only 20 AWS accounts. But however, that is a soft limit again. So you can go ahead and ask for the AWS to increase that soft limit so that you will be able to consolidate more than 20 AWS accounts in one of them. The major advantage is one billing per AWS account. And it's very easy to track the charges as well as allocate the cost and the volume pricing discount right so we also get some discounts that we are going to look through in the very next slide what other kind of discounts we get it so but the major advantage is very it is very easy to track as well as only one billing that is going to get generated overall now in terms of the advantage that we just learned that you are going to get a discount on the billing it is something like this now if i'm trying to use only a single aws account you see here, if I'm trying to just talk about the S3 pricing, so it says that the first one TB is being charged at 0 0.03 dollars per GB, and the next 49 TB per month is being charged at 0 0.0295 per GB, and followed by some charges are being available on this table at this point. Now let's say our test account is trying to use 600 GB, production account is trying to use 900 GB, and the back office account actually uses the 500 GB. Now, if I talk about this billing without consolidated section, what will happen? Everything falls under the below 1 TB. So I'm going to be charged at 0 0.03 per GB in this case. So 600 into 0 0.03 is going to give me $18. 900 into 0 0.03 is going to give me 27. And 500 into 0 0.03 is going to give me $15. So the overall cost I'm going to pay is $60 in this case. And when I add up all the sum of gbs here it becomes approximately 2 tb now if same if i go with the consolidated billing what happens in this case it is 1 tb into 0 0.03 because the first 1 tb is charged at 0 0.03 and the next 49 tb as we all know it's being charged at 0 0.0295 so the next 1 tb is being charged at 0 0.0295 so 9.50 dollars now the total bill is 59.50 of course, you may think that is very less figure, but in the real time with the production cases, we do have large amounts of data. This very small example where we are just talking about 600, 500 GB and 900 GB of data. Trust me, one EC2 instance itself is around 100 GB of EBS volumes when we talk about in the normal production account. So the place where I work itself for just for testing purposes, we do keep on creating the AMIs and the, each AMI will at least have 100 GBs of ABS volumes lying behind and those AMIs are hardly being deleted off but they are like some thousands of AMIs which do exist in our account so if I just consider of 100 GB being for each you can just imagine the amount of cost I'm going to save with this 
consolidated billing. So it's just about the one AWS account I'm talking about. They have a total of four to five AWS accounts in which they have all these different AMIs. And there are there's a lot that we do in the storage as a part of S3 and the other things. The major advantage would be something here, the reserved EC2 instances. Now company saves a lot here when we talk about the reserved EC2 instances. Now what happens is, let's say, this is the paying account, this is the test production and the back office account. Now, this, this is a production account, so they have purchased five reserved instances in this case. right? So what happens in the reserved instance? We all know, let's say, if the normal instance is charged at $1 per hour in the on-demand, if I have purchased it as a part of reserved instances, then the costing will be almost 50% of the 60%. So let's assume it's a 50% saving. So it becomes 0 $0.50 per hour now. So in the production account, they have purchased around five reserved instances. Now, if you see, it says that test account is currently using six on-demand instances and the production account is using three on-demand instances. But overall, we have actually purchased five reserved instances. So now since it has been purchased in the production account, we can still share the cost saving of this FI onto test or the back office account as well. So now I will be billed only for the FI instances, not uh, so yeah, I'll be billed only for the six plus three, it is nine, nine minus five becomes four. So I'll be billed only for the four reserved instance, four on demand instances and the five reserved instances I'll be billed at the very cheaper cost which I purchased it for, right? So in this case of reserved instances, we do actually get a lot of saving because companies have purchased a subscription for a huge amount on the case of reserved instances because the same, as I said, in our company's portfolio, they have four AWS accounts like this. And in, in any one of these AWS accounts, if they have purchased the reserved instances, the billing would drastically reduce for them, right? So in this case, if you see the total is number of instances that is currently running is six plus three nine. But however, since we have purchased five reserved instances, the cost for those five will be uh, like half of it. Normal, there's a normal cost and I am going to pay the bill only for the four of them. So in reserved instances, usually what happens is we pay the cost initially itself. So upfront payment, if we do, we can do it for one full year. So reserved instances are specifically where you know that I would like to continue with the capacity for one year or two years or three years long. Right? So reserved instances are the place where you are already telling that I would like to have a capacity of M1 large, which is like four virtual cores of CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. So you'll say that I would like to have this case of system all 24 bar 7, 365 days onto my AWS account itself. So you're trying to reserve a specific capacity. If you see here, it is available in the EC2, in the reserve. So the moment you go down to the EC2 section here on the left hand side, you will be able to see something called as reserved instances and the reserved instances are the place where you can actually say that I would like to purchase the subscription for the T2 micro for one year or for three years overall in a one shot. Right. So if I say I would like to go with a Linux machine, then the default of the default, I'll say, okay, I would like to purchase T2 2x large. Term, I'll say that I would like to purchase it for one year. 
let's see what all options you get right so it says if i'm going to use it for 12 months so there are three different types of options so if you want to make a upfront payment or if you do not want to make it if you want to go with partial or if you want to go for all so i'm going to use a standard offering class with all upfront payment let's say so i have to make a upfront payment of 2022 dollars at this point and then i do not have to pay anything for one year for this ec2 instances at all right which means my ec2 instance will be costing at 0.231 dollars per hour and the normal rate is around 0.284 or something more than that i guess yeah it would be more than this so it is basically showing the rate that will be per hour and then effective rate will be around 0.23 or 0.20 right so you are basically saving 50 40 to 50 percent of the costing in reserved instances so the normal instances that we use for every one hour so only important things to remember here is linked accounts so you can have up to 20 linked accounts overall however we can increase it to a higher limit by just raising a support case with the AWS and then we can also have the billing alerts as we all know so billing alerts will actually help you to track your budgets better like if you can you can set across saying that whenever the billing is going to hit more than hundred dollars it should send you an email saying that yes there, there has been a bill of more than hundred dollars on your AWS account for this specific month right so we can also go across and set, set the billing alerts and remember the way we are going to get the advantages with the help of consolidated billing so we can view the bill at one place itself for all the AWS accounts we can make the payment from one sided one AWS account itself and I'm going to get some discounts as well when I am having multiple AWS accounts tagged into the one so that was about the consolidated billing any questions or queries before we move to the next part